We've been given two functions, f of x equals x squared plus 1 and g of x equals the square root of x minus 4. We've been asked to find f composed with g of x in its domain and then g composed with f in its domain. Let's start with number 1. Find the function. We're going to simplify it if we can and then we'll find its domain using a two-step process. f composed with g of x is defined to be f of g of x. I see an inside function called g of x and an outside function called f of x. What that outside function does is it squares something and it adds one to it. And whatever is in this set of parentheses, right, whatever goes in for x is what I am squaring. And here that's something that's supposed to be g of x, which is the square root of x minus 4. Well, I simplify that and I get x minus 4 plus 1 equals x minus 3. F composed with g of x is equal to x minus 3 for all of the x's in an appropriately chosen domain. So let's find that domain. We always start by trying to find the domain of the inside function, and here that's g of x. Since g is the inside function and a square root function, I know x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to 4. That is the domain of g. That is the largest thing my new domain, the domain of this composite function, could be, because whatever x I choose first has to be able to go into the function g of x. All right, in my second step, I want to look for any values that, when I plug those x's into g, give me y values that aren't in the domain of f. I always like to think about just looking at my new formula. Are there any values of x that don't work in my new formula? Well, there's no even root, there's no fraction, so there's nothing else to throw out. I just get the domain of f composed with g is that domain from 4 to infinity. All right, so here's f composed with g. I'm only allowed to use the x's from 4 to infinity, even though if I just looked at this formula, I might miss it. I know all my x's have to be able to go into the inside function first. And number two, I'm asked to do the composition in the other way and talk about the domain again. This time, f is my inside function and g is my outside function. So that's a function that takes the square root of something minus 4. And what's that something? Well, it's x squared plus 1. Simplify that, and I have the square root of x squared minus 3. Now I have to worry about the domain of this function. I'm going to use the same two-step process. This one's a little more interesting in the second step. In step one, I look at this function and I say, well, the f of x is x squared plus one. There's no bottom of a fraction. There's no even root. There's nothing to be concerned with. The domain of that inside function is everything, all real numbers. The interval from minus infinity to infinity. But now I do have an interesting new formula. And the question is, where is x squared minus three greater than or equal to zero? And there's a couple of different ways of dealing with an inequality like this. But I'm going to think about the graph of y equals x squared minus 3 to answer this. Because we've been graphing functions for a while now. And it's a neat trick sometimes to get some information from a graph. So I know that this would be my standard parabola, the standard quadratic function, shifted down 3 units. For x squared minus 3 to be greater than or equal to 0, well, it means that graph has to be above or on the x-axis. So I'm looking for the x's that correspond to these places on the kind of wings on the outside of that function. And so I need to know where x squared minus 3 is equal to 0, so I know what x value that is and what x value that is. If I add 3 to both sides, I get x squared is equal to 3, take a square root, and we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So this part, all of those x squared minus 3's are positive, those are fine. Well, that would be from minus infinity until I get to minus root 3. 
These are bad values. Those, that's where x squared minus 3 is less than 0. I can't evaluate the square root then, so I leave those out. And then over here, I have from root 3 to infinity on the x-axis. And here's my domain of g composed with f. So we found two different function compositions and their domains using the same two functions. This one involves a nice little trick about working with a quadratic inequality. That's it for now.